everyone, I'm Frank Burrell, Assistant Director of Attraction Services with the City of Independence. We're here at the National Frontier Trails Museum where we want to discuss the history of water. Water was what allowed the earlier explorers to travel longer distances quicker and cheaper by boat. Once the explorers found easy access off the water to set up camp, they discovered good hunting, fishing, timber, and freshwater springs. It was a combination of those things that allowed them to replenish their supplies needed to continue their exploration and journey westward. This put independence on the map for others to follow. It became a jumping off point for the western expansion of the Overland Trails. The abundant supply of water by the Missouri River and many freshwater springs in the region allowed for the establishment of community. The pioneers and settlers could then sustain themselves off the fertile land. Well, of course, they needed to be aware of the risk of fast moving waters. There was also potential for seasonal flooding, so any camping along the river's edge was dangerous. It was important for the early settlers to have a good, sustainable, and safe water supply because waterborne illnesses caused by a variety of microorganisms could lead to devastating illness such as cholera and other intestinal problems. Actually, our water comes from wells. We have 42 wells that are located down by the Missouri River and M291 Highway. The water is actually drawn from the Missouri River alluvial aquifer. They're between 85 and 125 feet deep. We do not get any water at all from the Missouri River. When the water comes up from underneath the ground, it's actually a very good quality but we want to do just a few things to the water. Uh, the first thing is we want to soften the water. All that means is we want to remove minerals because the groundwater contains a lot of iron, calcium, and magnesium. Wouldn't hurt you to drink it, but the iron does make things orange. So to do that, we add limestone that softens the water. We want to make sure the water is nice and safe to drink, contains no bacteria. So we add chlorine for that. And then we actually filter the water down through sand and gravel. So it goes down through layers of sand and gravel and any solid material that's in the water is gonna get filtered out so the water is nice and clear. We monitor the clarity of the water. It's a test called turbidity. But the sand and gravel does get dirty because it does such a good job filtering out. So we wash the sand and gravel. So every 56 hours of operation, we drain the water out of the tanks and force water back up through the bottom and wash out that sand and gravel so it's ready to clean again. Yes, absolutely. We have a dedicated staff of folks that work around the clock to make sure that you always have safe drinking water and of ample quality to your taps. We do testing on the water as it comes through the plant and we also do testing on the water out in the distribution system to make sure the water quality out there is as good as it was when it left the plant. Well, actually, Independence is very blessed to have a very abundant supply of water because the aquifer is so large. We've done studies that show that we're actually taking out only a very small percentage of the water that's down there. And when you think about our plant can produce up to 48 million gallons of water a day, that kind of gives you an idea of how big that aquifer is. Absolutely, yes. I think the Independence residents have always known we had good water, but just to independently verify, a few years ago we started sending samples of our water to the Berkeley Springs International Water Tasting Contest, and that's the largest and longest running water tasting contest in the world, and we've scored very well there. We've been in the top five best tasting waters in the world eight times, and we ranked as high as second in the world for the best tasting water. So we have independent verification that Independence has really good water. <laughs>